Take Two founder Ryan Brandt passed away on March 23, 2019, at the age of 49. This news was announced by the Cottlebound Funeral, Cremation, and Event Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. Brandt founded Take Two back in 1993 and served as the company CEO until February 2001 but remained with the company as chairman for many years, eventually taking a non-executive role as VP of production, until leaving in 2006. We were saddened to learn of the passing of Ryan Brandt, a take to spokesperson said. His vision for interactive entertainment began our company's long-standing history and we are grateful for his contributions. We extend our condolences to his family and friends. Friends, family, and former colleagues shared their memories of Brent in their personal obituaries. Paradox Interactive and Microsoft have joined forces to create Paradox Mods, a new open modding platform for X1 and PC. The platform will allow modders to share their beloved creations with Plays on both X1 and PC. Why God? Are the Paradox launcher with a single upload and features in game and the web interfaces that should enable the distribution. It's available right now as a free update to Surviving Mars and has launched with over 30 mods for console players, such as one project that has a self sufficient forest greenhouse and Another that lets players build a Martian car wash. Paradox intends to add support for more of its titles later this year. Modding has been and remains an important part of the Paradox community, as we have diversified the way we distribute our games. We want to make sure all our players can take part in the creation process, said Paradox Mods product owner Anders Toland. In a press release, for Surviving Mars, we have worked with mod creators to support Paradox mods, with some of the best mods available, all in one place and downloadable in-game, or simply using a web browser. Players can access the platform by logging into their account from the Surviving Mars title screen and opening the mod manager to access the Paradox mods catalog. Selected mods will then be automatically downloaded and added to the experience. This interview is part of our Road to the If series. You can find the rest by clicking here. Do not feed the monkey space players in charge of multiple camera feeds, looking in on the private lives of various people, but asks them not to mess with their lives, with all of this information being unveiled to them. And the mysteries of this lives laid bare. Can players resist the urge to interact with them in some way? Theory and Brothers developers behind the Sumus McNally Grand Prize, Excellence in Design, and NUOVRAWARD nominated game spoke with Gamma Soup about the thoughts that went into creating a game about watching people, the mysteries that can be found in ordinary links and how taking a light-hearted look at some unsettling subject matter made it more approachable to players. We are Mario, Alberto, and Louis Sullivan, programmer, narrative and game designer, and producer of Do Not Feed the Monkeys. We started making games, let's say professionally, in late 2013. Before that, Mario had done some small games in his free time. But none of us had been in touch with the video games industry, other than as players. We, the founders of Fictier Oma, are three brothers that have been playing video games since video games entered homes. In fact, our first computer was the X Spectrum 48K. We played together for ages, mostly narrative driven games, which we love. In fact, the idea of making our own video games as a team started back then, when we were kids and teenagers. Back in 2013, we decided that we wanted to create together the games we 
Do you love to play? And that's how Fakti Arama was born. Since then, we have developed two commercial games. That synchronicity. Tomorrow comes today. 2015. I old school point and click adventure game release on PC. I old S. Android, PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. And well, do not feed the monkeys. 2018, which is our most ambitious game so far. In the beginning, do not feed the monkeys was inspired by the main character of a novel we read a few years ago. W H O. Now and then, stares at his neighbor who lives in front of him and watches him dancing all alone. This guy, the watcher. Cannot stop wondering about the reasons for that. Is his neighbor taking classes and he likes to practice, but he does not have a couple. Does he try to recall happier times when he used to go dancing with the person he loved? We thought it would be really interesting to develop a game with men mechanics that involved watching other people and trying to find out about the reasons behind their behavior wondering about their lives. Of course, the film Rear Window came to our minds really quickly, but we thought an interface like the main view of the movie had certain restraints regarding the number of people to spy on, and the kind of stories we could tell. So, we kept looking for inspiration about the final approach of the car idea behind the game. We used Unity 3D as the main engine, and then an in-house custom narrative design tool to create and implement the storylines, dialogues, and so forth into Unity. We tracked progress and managed the production using Hamplan, a great tool made by some Spanish mates that we definitely recommend to every video games producer. After watching movies like Rare Window, and the life of others, and ray playing games like the good old little computer people, looking for the right approach for our new game, we happened upon, and grow really terrified about, the existence of websites like www, Instagram, or, these sites feature the video feeds from thousands of unprotected, surveillance cameras worldwide placed out in the open in highways on the streets and nature backgrounds, but also in malls, restaurants, libraries, bars, warehouses, and even private homes. Then, we decided to mix the two ideas. What about a game in which the avatar had access to dozens of live camera feeds, so that they can spy on people, and try to guess about the lives of the watched people? We loved with the idea immediately. It allowed us to tell lots of stories featuring different genres, and to experiment with complex, rich narrative and game mechanics in a very creative way. So, we started working on the game, as it is now in January 1916, hand in hand with our mid set Badland, and finished the game almost three years later. Published by ALAWA and Premium, after making Dead Synchronicity, in which we bought a post apocalyptic, dark, harsh story, we really felt like doing something different and facing a challenge in our next game. We wanted to try different genres and other emotional moves than the ones featured in our first game. Going far, do not feed the monkeys, gave us the chance to unleash our creativity in regards to storytelling. In the game there are dramatic, comical, satirical, tragic, terror, sci-fi stories, and more. We used this diversity to awaken the players' interest and to engage them, since our goal was to surprise them throughout the game about what happens in the so-called cages, the hacked surveillance cameras. In that regard, we used two layers of adhesive to keep players glued to the chair and play longer. Firstly, they wish to unveil the mystery of each story, which is the motivation for the people you are spying on. Okay, uh, monkeys, what do they want to achieve? What are their lives like? And, secondly, 
There are expectations about what they will find in the new cage they just bought. The balancing of the puzzles was indeed a very important element with had to manage T-H-R-U-G-H-O-U-T-D-E-V-A-L-O-P-M-E-N-T. In fact, in Do Not Feed the Monkeys, the narrative and the game mechanics are so intertwined that that will have to rewrite several stories and their puzzles every time. There was a rather deep change or adjustment in the game mechanics.